Well, I'm Mike Russell. I'm an orthopedic surgeon specializing in spine surgery uh, here in Tyler, Texas with the Zay Orthopedics and Sports uh, Medicine here in Tyler, Texas. And um, I'm going to talk to you today about a herniated disc in the spine. Uh, 99 plus percent of the herniations are either in the neck, what we call the cervical spine, or the low back, what we call the lumbar spine. So I'll go over those two because that's the vast majority of what you're going to see out there. So the first one and the most common is going to be the lower back or the lumbar spine. And here we have a model of that. And again, you can see on the front of the, um, the spine is the, the vertebra and the discs. Well, these discs are kind of a soft, spongy type material that when you're young, they're full of a lot of water. But as you age, they lose that water content and they come, become a little bit more like um, crab meat consistency or something like that. But as you can see, there's nerves that come out of the spine on the back side of the disc. And so what can happen, sort of like if you had a tear in a, the radial belt of a tire, um, you can get a tear in the ligament that goes around the disc, which allows some of that disc material to herniate. And if it catches a nerve, which in a high proportion of patients it does, it can cause leg pain, what we call radiculopathy. In those cases, if there's weakness or progressive pain or pain that keeps you from doing what you want to do, hurts your function, then sometimes we do what's called a microscopic discectomy. That's the surgical treatment for that. Now, a certain percentage of them can get better on their own, and some of them don't cause enough pain or dysfunction to need treatment at all. Um, other treatments besides surgery would include injections, rest, ice, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, etc. So that's the basic uh, understanding of a lumbar or low back herniated disc. Now as far as the cervical spine, which is again the neck, here's a model of that. And if you can see here, this is the skull that's been taken away. This is the side view, the front view with the vertebra and disc. And again, the discs have the, the soft spongy material that can herniate backwards along the spinal cord. And I don't have a real good uh, show to, a, ability to show you the spinal cord, but the spinal cord is going down through the column here and these nerves come out the side. And again, just like in the low back, what can happen is the, that disc material can herniate, which means uh, escape the normal uh, anatomy. And if it gets by the spinal cord or the spinal nerves, it can cause radiculopathy, arm pain. It can even cause some uh, damage to the spinal cord itself, which can cause all kinds of unusual things like difficulty walking, stumbling, occasionally bladder incontinence. So there's a lot of different things that can come from the neck. The basic treatment for that in most cases is going to be surgery where we go to the front of the neck and we go in and we have to take that disc completely out and get back to where it's pushing on the spinal nerve or the spinal column or the uh, um, spinal cord itself. And so if that happens, when we take that disc out, we will have to replace the disc with a piece of bone and a plate, what's called a fusion. It's a fairly simple procedure. Usually it takes about 30 to 45 minutes. We do usually keep you in the hospital overnight for those to make sure you don't have any bleeding in the neck and have any complications. But that's usually um, fairly straightforward and a high success rate. Definitely in the 95 plus percentage of patients, this would get rid of the symptoms, which would usually be pain in the arm and or weakness in the arm, but can include other things, what we call myelopathy, which is basically dysfunction in the legs and or bowel or bladder. So that's the neck or the cervical fusion that goes with that. I, did, I failed to mention when we do the lumbar surgery, those microdiscectomies that I talked about are usually day surgery. So the vast majority of patients would go home the same day. So thank you very much.